Hello, it's Aaron Sorensen with VFX Central, and I've had a couple of people request this tutorial, so I'm going to be creating it for you, and it's this effect. One more time. So this basic effect is really just taking an image, uh, cutting it out, tracking a shot, and compositing it in there. So let's get started. I'd like to say how important it is to plan your VFX shots before you go out and shoot them. So the effect I was trying to achieve here was someone floating, and I knew I could get away with it using still images, and if I filmed up and down left and right and didn't really move a lot in Z space. So here's a shot I got. And I've already gone ahead and tracked this in 3D using After Effects built-in 3D camera tracker. Before I put my actor in the shot, it's good to have a reference point in 3D space where he'll reside. So if you click on your layer that you did the tracker on, and you click on your camera tracker, there's all these points. So what I did is selected one of them, pressed Command, went to Create, and did Null Object. We're just going to ignore this error for now. And we'll see that we ha now have a Null Object that stays right where that tracker was. When we were on set, I had the actor jump up a couple of times and I snapped a couple photos. Then I went to Photoshop and I separated him from the background. Select the layer that you cut your actor out from, drag it, drop it on top of your footage, then click the 3D mode, and we can see he's way too close to the camera. So we need to copy this position and paste it onto his layer. Now he's still too big, so let's scale him down and we can move him. Now if I play back, he should hold. Now that we have him tracked in and he's holding position, we need to animate him. So click on his layer, make a keyframe, go to the very end, and slowly have him raise up. Let's see. Then what we need to do is use our puppet tool. So if you click on his layer and you click on the pins, you can make marks on him. And I like to make him on his joints, down his spine, pelvis, hips, knee, ankle, and feet. When I created these, it actually creates keyframes. So if you press U, you can see all the keyframes it created. So I made a keyframe right there, and we can go to the very end, and with our puppet tool, press V for your arrow tool, you, we can move these around. So you can get away with a lot of cool things. To save some time, I've already gone ahead and I've animated the pins on his body, on the first frame and on the last. And this is what it started looking like. It's very subtle, I have his hands coming out and his feet slightly pointing, but it really sells. Next, we need to add some shadows. So what I did was duplicated his layer, clicked on it, pressed R, rotated it in the X rotation, 90 degrees. Then I press P, I uncheck my timeline because we have to reposition it, move it down to where the floor would be underneath his feet right there. Then I rechecked the keyframe in the first frame, went to the very end, and slightly moved him up in Y space. Now just type in your effects and presets, tint, drag and drop that in here. Try to select some colors that are what we want our shadow to be. And then we're going to bring this down to about 45%. Maybe that's a little too low, maybe bring it back up. I'm going to add a little bit more blue in this. And then we're going to do a fast blur. Feather this out a little bit more. We could actually go a little bit darker in here. This has a little bit more of a green hue in it, so we're going to try to push some more green in there. Let's turn this up a teeny bit more down there. It's looking good so far. Now, the problem is the shadow goes over the tracks. And again, I went ahead, I duplicated the bottom layer, brought it to the top, and I did a mask. Let me solo this for you. You can see I made a mask, and I animated the mask. doesn't need to be perfect. And so if I turn that on, now our shadow will go behind that. 
and I think we're just about done. There's one more thing you can do that will make it look a little more real, and that's adding noise and grain on our still image. Still images do not have any moving noise or grain, so what I like to do is click on our layer, and there's a effect called Match Grain. Drag drop that on there. It'll start in preview mode, and then you can see what it's doing in this small box, but I always just go straight to final output. And you need to choose something that it's going to sample from. So go here and go to the very bottom layer. This is very subtle, but it does a lot. You'll see now there's a little bit of noise in there when we press play, but I'm going to turn it down. Sometimes it overdoes it. So if we go to tweaking, let's just bring this down to 0.4. And that should be enough. All right, that about does it for this tutorial. It's a very subtle effect, but I think it's very effective and it's pretty easy to do. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, find us on Facebook, and uh, check out vfxcentral.net where we have a bunch of free products. And we're going to be having a lot more coming out this summer, so stay tuned.